guys, it's Emily again. Last lesson we went over a clinch knot and a loop knot. Today is lesson number two on knots to know. We will be going over a palomar knot and a dropper loop knot. Now here's Mike to show you them. Okay. Well, for a dropper loop, this is supposedly one of those 100% knot strength knots. And what you do is you take your tag end, right here, you double it over, take the eye of your hook, I had to put some painter's tape on there because I kept bleeding all over everything, but you put the loop through this, you put it right through your eye. I'm using real thick cotton string so you can see it but it's not cooperating with my knots here so all you're gonna do is you pull it through move over once pull it through the loop you just made and see how it's on this side of it so then you just bring the hook right through and then you're gonna wet it cinch it down this uh, isn't cinching well because it's cotton and not monofilament, but hopefully you get the idea. Alright, I'm going to have to wet this. And this is what it's going to look like. And again, supposedly it's a 100% knot strength on this knot. But let's go ahead. Oh, and this is also a knot you're going to need to use with uh, braid, when you tie braid to something, except you're going to have to double it up. So I'm going to double it up this time and you'll see what I'm talking about. So we're going to take the tag end, get it on over. Still got some pieces there. I'm going to put it through the eye of your hook just like so. Make your loop, feed it through now this is just a regular if you're using mono. If you were using braid, you're going to go through one more time. It'll be a double Palomar to use for braid. I don't think I'll be able to cinch that down because of this cotton, but I just want you to know that's a double Palomar. This is a single Palomar. So you get a bonus knot out of the deal. So back through. Pull it all the way through. I'm going to wet it this time so it cinches. Or maybe it won't cinch as well. Oh, come on, not. You're on TV. There we go. Cinch down. So that's your Palomar. Again, 100% not strength, supposedly. Let's go ahead and get out of this one. The next one is called a dropper loop. And I know this isn't going to cinch down, so I'm going to really use some big line here. I'm going to pretend like this is the hook, even though it's just an old paint can opener. And I'm going to pretend like this is your fishing line. Okay, so the way you do a dropper loop is this. You place it through the eye of your hook. Remember, this is your hook. You're going to go through the eye of your hook. You're going to wrap it around. One, normally you would do this six or eight different times. Uh, and this is how you do setups for say a uh, Pompano rig or a down rig on a Jupiter, um, on a grouper type of uh, setup. So you're going to take your hook, you're going to try to find the middle knot, you're going to push it through that middle knot. Give yourself some space there and then cinch it down. I'm going to hold it. And this is a dropper loop in the huge version using a piece of rope uh, because it wasn't going to work with the uh, with the other twine. But here's, here's what you're trying to do with it. So you know your basic pompano rig that you have set up. You got your sinker on the bottom tied to it, you come on up the line a little bit, you create your dropper loop, and that's great for a whiting setup or a um, pompano setup. A lot of times with grouper fishermen they want to do that so the, the hook is above the weight so they can feel the bite better just to get that split second advantage to get your grouper 
out of the rocks. So this is what a dropper loop is going to be used for predominantly. Okay, I'm going to try to show you again using the smaller version. I just am not quite sure if this is going to work as well, but let's give it a go. So we're going to get the hook. We're going to put the hook through. And you would figure out what distance you wanted this to be apart from your other hooks and everything like that. And we're going to wrap it around. Typically it's going to be 8 to 10 times. Again, I'm going to do less because uh, this twine just doesn't, doesn't cinch down very, very well. So I don't know how many that is. Let's do one more. And I'm going to try to find the center loop. I usually do it with my mouth, but... So there's your center, center loop. You're just going to feed your hook through it and then pull it through to make your dropper loop. So there's your, there's your loop. Pull it on through. Whatever distance you want it to be away from your line. I'm not going to worry too much about that today. You're just going to cinch it on down. It actually makes a real pretty knot. Just like that. So that's how you do a dropper loop. And you can have three, four, five, however many of these you want. Uh, you could uh, rig up your own sabiki rigs if you wanted to. But this is the, that's your basic dropper loop right here. And that is it for today's knot tying lesson too. Back to Emily. What do we got coming on next time? Next lesson, we have the surgeon knot and the uni knot. Till then, bye.